Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I want to say good afternoon to those of you joining me here on the East Coast. It is just after 12 noon Eastern time. I also, of course, want to say good morning to those of you joining us from the central time zones, the mountain time zones, or the Pacific time zones. Great to see you here. And of course, we want to say good evening for any of you joining us from across the pond in parts of UK or parts of Europe, as well as of course, good early morning if any of you are joining us from parts of Asia or Australia. Well, welcome to today's presentation, What is Behind the Power Options Search Criteria? Today we're going to discuss some of the advantages of the Power Options tools, and we're going to review some of the criteria that are available and the criteria, of course, that are already set up for you to use as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike Chupka. I am the Director of Education here at Power Options. Um, just give you a little bit of background first. What is Power Options? Well, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors. Our tools are completely web-based, of course, so you don't need to download a program onto your computer, worry about if it interacts uh, with different uh, operating systems or anything along those lines. Ernie Zarenner created the Power Options tools back in 1997, essentially to trade his own personal account. He made the tools available online. I've been working with Power Options since about 2001 and trading options for the past 15, 16 years or so. Now, over the last 20 years, we've expanded the various tools, search criteria that are available in multiple different strategies uh, based on customer feedback, your feedback, and as well as changes in the market, availability of new options, new strategy ideas, new management techniques, and of course, we do support search tools and analysis tools and of course, tracking tools for management and evaluating rollout opportunities in over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. So, what strategies are available? Well, bullish, neutral to bullish positions, you've got covered calls, naked puts, buying calls, long collars, of course, uh, married puts, bull put credit spreads, bull call debit spreads, calendar spreads, both diagonal and horizontal, and what's called the covered combination, sort of a covered call mixed with a naked put. Of course, for the bears, we've got covered puts, naked put, or naked calls, I should say, the opposites, buying puts, the short collar, we're shorting stock and selling a put and buying a call to protect it, married calls, bear call credits, bear put debits, calendar put spreads as well. And those of you who are more neutral, we do have search criteria for iron condors, iron butterflies. You're a little bit more risky going further out of the money, but don't want to buy that option for the condor. You've got short straddles and short strangles. And I list long straddle and long strangle as other. They're not really neutral. You're wanting a significant move in one direction or the other. Some could consider them neutral. They're really the opposite of neutral. You don't know the direction, but you want a big move as well. Well, why so many strategies? Okay, why aren't we just picking a strategy and say, oh, trade this or oh, do this? Well, every investor has their own risk reward tolerance. What they're willing to risk for a potential return, they want to use the leverage spreads, of course, bull puts, bear call credits, which might take a high risk to reward factor depending on their probability. Others are going to be more conservative. Some prefer to generate income, covered calls, naked puts, the credit spreads and collars. And some are going to look to just buy calls and buy puts, looking for that great increase or decrease in a stock based on their sentiment to get that high leverage return. Some of you, of course, like me, probably trade four or five different strategies in your personal portfolio. And some of you may be even doing elaborate strategies, five-leg spreads or six-leg spreads, depending on your outlook as well. Now, very quickly, let's just figure out what you're doing. I'm just going to launch one poll. I only have one poll today. And I'm curious to know, what option strategies are you trading or researching right now? Now, I've allowed this to have multiple answers. So if you trade covered calls on some core holdings in your account, but you also maybe use credit spreads with 15 to 20% of your account, and occasionally you'll do straddles and strangles around earnings, throw that in as well. If you don't see a strategy or you don't feel you fall into a group here, no problem. Just click on other, and then go ahead and send me what strategy you're trading inside the question pod uh, off to the right there or wherever the 
GoToWebinar, GoToMeeting platform opened on your screen. I'd be interested to see what you're trading if you don't fall into one of these groups as well. Okay, so we've got, uh, oh, I apologize folks, uh, we've got uh, about 70% of our audience has already voted. And uh, let's see here, I'm going to leave it open for another 10, 15 seconds. Don't want to leave it open for a minute, more than a minute or so, because we want to get through some other information too. We've only got about eight more slides of introduction, then we're going to jump right in to look at the search tools, look at the default settings, look at what's possible, and the benefits of using power options over other services. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to close the poll, and of course, we'll share the results with everyone. Remember, it's going to add up to more than 100 because we could answer multiple ones. But the largest percentage is covered calls and naked puts. 50% uh, of you are doing call buying and put buying, maybe even straddles and strangles uh, for long term or maybe just for round earnings. And about 50% of you are doing vertical spreads. 42% uh, excuse me, are doing the protected positions, married puts and collars. I have 8% of you doing other strategies where you don't feel uh, that you've fallen onto this group or the selections that I presented to you. And that's perfectly fine. I'll keep an eye on the question pod there to see if uh, you send me in the strategy that you're using where you don't feel you fit into these categories. All right, but that's important information to know as we go forward to our presentation. Let's go ahead and hide those results. And let's go ahead now and make sure that everyone's back on the same view. Perfect. Okay, so we're back on our slides here. All right. Now, as we know, we're all savvy options investors. It looks like you're all active options investors, it looks like, which is fantastic. We know there's many avenues for new positions. You may open a covered call, bull put credit spread, or bear call credit spread from a source as a stock picking service. I know many of our customers at Power Options also maybe use VectorVest or another stock research and they take their list, import it into Power Options, and on their bullish positions, their bullish stocks that were recommended, they look for new positions. You might have your own charting, your own research. I have customers in Power Options who for years, they've been Power Options customers for years, and they only follow five to 10 stocks. Occasionally they'll trade naked puts, and if they get assigned, they'll transfer it to a covered call or a collar position, but they just trade those five stocks that they're comfortable with. There's nothing wrong with that. You can easily set up your list and find the best opportunities too. You may also get recommendations from friends or coworkers, but more than likely over time, You've developed your own search process and your search criteria, which works for you many months out of the year, but occasionally you get into some positions where your performance is not as good as it was six months ago or eight months ago. Of course, the market's dynamic and ever-changing as well. Why is Power Options better and a beneficial service? Because we give you the exact tools and the exact criteria to put in specifically what you want. And all of the 23 plus strategies I reviewed earlier, you'll be able to enter a variety of criteria for the options, such as the expiration time frame, whether you want to do standard or whether you want to do weeklies, or you want to do a time frame of say eight to 20 days out in time and see all positions that match your premium requirement or net credit, time value, percentage return on your risk, the risk itself, Implied volatility and ranges, bid ask spreads even. You want to limit those down, liquidity on the option, probability, delta, Greeks, the strike width for those of you doing spreads, and much more. And you also will see, you will know exactly what criteria you're using for a search or what we're showing from one of our default searches, we show you that right on the screen. But at the same time, in a given strategy, in addition to putting in what you wanted to see for your option specifics, you can also put in specific stock technicals. Use beta, 52-week trading range, liquidity, volatility for the stock itself, RSI, Bollinger Bands, simple moving average, MACD crossovers or uh, historical trends as well. That's all available. And for the fundamentals also for the stocks, you want to put in a range of stock price. Those of you doing covered calls and naked puts, for example, collars or married puts, uh, stock change today, earnings per share growth, P-E ratio, if the stock pays a dividend or not, liquidity again with market cap, 
things like price to book, price to sales, earnings, avoiding earnings, very important as well. And of course, you can also import your own stock list, whether it's five stocks, 50 stocks, or 500 stocks. You can put those in and screen just against those stocks with your specific options criteria so you know the results only match your specific needs. All right. So when you create a screen on power options, and we know that there are other services that might offer you a stock list or a list of stocks for their 20-day time frame or 30-day time frame, but they're not telling you exactly why they consider that a bullish or bearish stock. Some services are going to provide you with trade picks or talk about a potential bull put credit spread on a certain stock, for example. You might see that on a webinar, but then they don't follow up unless, of course, you pay. And those that do trade picks, you might not see the full track record as they've rolled positions out in time. They don't consider them a loss. They don't consider them a gain. You don't know if you're getting the full thing. But on the Power Options tools, you know exactly what criteria are being used to find the trades for the stock and for the option. There's no guessing and no second guessing. And But how do you know which criteria to use? I just reviewed a lot of criteria. How do you know which ones are important and which ones aren't? And that's where we come in. The answer really is every criteria might be important depending on the strategy. But you're probably not going to use every criteria as well. When we focus on the underlying security, we know that we can find bearish positions in a bullish market. I've got a stock that's down over the last uh, two to three days about 8% when the market and similar stocks have been going up. Now, I'm in a protected position, so I'm not worried about the loss on it. In fact, I can still manage it. But we also know that if the market turns, we've been maybe overbought and hitting new highs recently a lot. I'm not saying I am bearish, but we also know that even if the market turns, there's going to be some bullish opportunities out there as well. So in addition to selecting the right strikes for the security that you're doing and the option strategy you're doing, you want to make sure you've got the stock criteria. Of course, we know there's do's and don'ts in every option strategy, and you want to make sure the criteria matches that. Those of you doing covered calls, if you go too deep in the money or too deep out of the money, you might be looking at a very small premium too far out of the money and a very small time value too deep in the money. Not premium itself, but just the time value. That might not match your trading goals. Those of you doing maybe speculative long calls or long puts, if you go too deep out of the money, trying to hit that home run and pay 10 or 15 cents for an option premium, well, if it moves up, you might be successful. But at the same time, you're also, if that's your trading plan, you also know you're willing to lose 80% of the time. Most of those calls and puts would expire worthless. Doing a credit spread, I talked about this on a recent webinar, I would never do an in-the-money bull put credit or bear call credit spread, we can talk about that a little bit later, or an out-of-the-money debit spread, unless I'm extremely bullish on a position, but I would never do an in-the-money credit spread. I might do a slightly out-of-the-money debit spread, but I have to be very long-term, very far out in time, and very bullish on the position. Okay, now, where do we come in? In every strategy, we have a variety of default criteria and what are called sample searches based on what has worked for us in the past with a theme search in mind. These are strategies and these are criteria that we've created to match customer needs and our own needs and we've traded in our own personal accounts. A common question I'll get from a new trial member, a new subscriber to Power Options is what criteria do you and Ernie, sorry folks, what criteria do you and Ernie look for in a covered call, a naked put, or a credit spread? Well, the answer is it's already there for you on Power Options in the search tools as well. And you'll see common approaches for the different sentiments. In the default bullish to neutral searches, you'll see common criteria for Stocks in an uptrend, maybe trading above a 20 or 50 day moving average, a MACD crossover, Bollinger Band ranges. Also look for good fundamentals, you know, positive earnings growth, good liquidity, relative PE, and more. The same underlying criteria you might see in a search for covered calls, you might see the same fundamentals and technicals in, say, a bull put credit spread. They're sort of different strategies, but the sentiment is the same. And what works for one 
is probably going to work for the other because we're neutral to bullish. We want the stock to be the same or move up in price. And it's the same for the other sentiments. Bearish to neutral strategies, bear call credits, calendar put spreads as well. Stocks in a downtrend, poor fundamentals, negative crossovers for MACD or historical trends. The neutral position might look for stocks in a trading range based on Bollinger Band or percent of 52-week range even. And of course, the income strategies, credit spreads, debit spreads, iron condors and more. We're probably going to be avoiding earnings. And of course, you can screen for probability. And then the really bullish or bearish positions, what do I mean by that? Just buying calls and buying puts, speculating on growth, speculating on a breakout. We've got searches created for you to look for recent breakouts in Bollinger Band and MACD, as well as increased option volume. Those are good stepping stones to start with based on the sentiment. Scott asked a question, how is your information kept current? Okay, well, Scott's not talking about the data on power options. The data is 20-minute delayed, uh, of course, and we also offer real-time service. What Scott's asking about is, how is your search criteria kept current? Well, Ernie and I go back, and we test the criteria from time to time. We look to improve the criteria. And sometimes we just leave certain basic ones alone as they either seem to have been working or not been working. We don't test every strategy every day, Scott. We don't test the criteria in our strategy every 30 to 40 days. But probably every three to four months when market conditions change. So for example, if we do have a bearish turn, Scott, we're oversold and then we start to see a pullback in the market, Ernie and I will look at what's coming up in the bull put credit spread search. Is it far enough out of the money considering the market sentiment? We'd advise that maybe now with the trend of the market turning, you shouldn't be doing bull puts or bear calls. But as I mentioned, you can find bullish positions in a bearish market. The criteria that are used, as I mentioned, for let's say a bullish position where I want to stock above a 20-day moving average, recent MACD crossover perhaps, Bollinger Band range, well, if the market's falling back and those stocks are coming down, they wouldn't appear in the default search. You might see an inverse ETF appear, or two times bear ETF start to appear in the bull put credit spreads as the market's falling, because those are the ones that are now in an uptrend above their 20-day moving average and showing a MACD breakout. We've got more information on that for you, Scott, coming up in just a little bit uh, towards the end of the presentation. All right? Okay. So, how does this all work out? Going back into Scott's question. When you create a search and power options, or if you just go right into our default searches in one of the strategies that we mentioned, you know you're seeing only the trades that match your trading plan or the criteria that were listed if you haven't changed any ones yet. You know exactly why the certain stocks appeared in the list because it's shown to you. You know exactly which options. Why did those options, why did this strike appear and this one didn't? Because it doesn't have the return you're looking for. It doesn't have uh, the liquidity the option volume or the open interest that you are looking for. Now, of course, we do have, and we'll talk, maybe talk about that later, but we also have unique tools if you're just looking one stock at a time for each strategy too. You know and can adjust the criteria, what exactly was used is shown to you, and you can change these at any time based on market conditions. Well, as I mentioned, I only had about nine or ten slides for this portion before we go into power options, so let's go ahead and jump into the power options suite of tools we're going to take a look at your strategies that you selected, and we're going to take a look at some of the default criteria. We're going to talk about some other ideas as well. All right, let me make sure my screen changes, folks. All right, there we go. What we're looking at here is the, of course, uh, default 14-day free trial setup of Power Options. Very quickly, for those of you who maybe have not done that, at any time you can go to powerop.com, just put in your name and email address, you'll have full access to the delayed service for 14 days with no credit card information required. Okay? How do we access the search? How do we adjust the criteria? And what is the difference between all the default criteria in every strategy? I want to show something first. We've already selected, I've asked you, and you generously answered, of course, thank you very much, what strategies we're currently trading. We have investors doing covered calls and naked puts. Some of you online were doing credit spreads. 
some of you are buying calls. Didn't have anyone chime in say they're doing calendar calls. We have some of you doing married puts and long callers as well. So we've got most everything in there. But what I want to do is I'm going to go into the search screen. I'm sorry. I'm going to go into what we call the other strategies tab. So if you log on to power options, you don't see a strategy that you want on the field. Go ahead and click on other strategies. Let's go ahead and take out calendar call for the time being. And we've got our credits, got our long call, covered call, naked put, married put, and more. Uh, let's just go ahead and add in straddle. Okay, so if I want to do strangle, let's say strangle, excuse me. We're going to go ahead and select long strangle from our variable list, click add to menu. Okay, so now we have the different searches and the different strategies that are available. Okay. All right. Oh, and, and a different Scott. Scott C. mentioned, Scott O. asked the first question. Scott C. just mentioned he does many calendars to get into married puts. Okay. So you're doing maybe calendar puts there to get into the married put position. I recently uh, wrote a blog about that. And Scott's had some success with it over time. Well, let's talk about covered calls and naked puts. The winner today is 67%, but don't worry. I'll review most of the criteria that are used for all the strategies that you selected in our most recent poll. To access the search, the default criteria in a given strategy, you can simply click on that particular strategy tab. We have the submenus here beneath, so I can go into sample searches or the search right away. What's the difference between these two? The sample searches are themed searches that we've created over time based on what customers might look for based on their risk reward tolerance. Now, earlier I mentioned, why would I have so many different searches in there? Why are we not saying which one is the best one? I'm going to get to that in a moment for certain strategies. But again, it depends on the risk and the reward of the investor. Here we are in the sample searches for covered calls. The first search, themed search that comes up is what's called the 7-Eleven report. This particular covered call screen is highly aggressive. It's looking for covered calls with a very high premium that have at least a 7% return if assigned for about a 30-day period. That's almost double the norm. But also offer at least an 11% downside protection, which means for those who are doing covered calls, the stock can fall 11% before you're losing money on the position. Okay, Why is this search here? Some investors like to be very aggressive with their covered calls. They're looking for that very high return. I'll be honest with you. It's not what I do particularly. I don't even trade covered calls that much anymore. But if your goal is to be more aggressive, this is the one for you. So we click on 7-Eleven report. It takes us right into the search field. Excuse me. We see we've got a AAOI applied opto electronics at 9408. 30 day out August 90 calls trading at 11.10. This is an 8.5% if assigned and 11.8% downside protection. What's more important is that we tell you right here, we review why this theme search was created, what is available, and you can scroll down below and over here in the active filters menu we can see specifically what is being used for this search. Limiting it to 10 to 35 days out in time. So if a weekly was there, it would appear. The implied volatility has to be greater than 1.5. Percent if assigned, if called out, greater than 7. Downside greater than 11. The option bid price is greater than 0.3. And again, what did we talk about with what we look for in a neutral to bullish position? Broker recommendation. Stock trading above a 20-day moving average, and a reasonable stock price. Now, what's missing from this? Some things I might do. MACD, which I'm sure is above the line, I would maybe look to avoid earnings between now and expiration. Okay, But that's personal preference. This is a very aggressive, very volatile position. I'll be honest with you. Most of the positions that come up in this list may or may not have earnings that come up between now and expiration, but are likely biotech stocks that maybe have a phase two or phase three drug trial coming up 
and that's something you'd want to research. That's for another webinar, but you can do your own research and analysis with quick links here right from the results. Okay, Martin said, how did I get to the 7-Eleven report? Okay, again, we went under covered call. We first clicked on sample searches. Notice I'm in the search now, okay, but we went to sample searches, and that's where our theme search was, the 7-Eleven report. That's the first one under the covered call menu. Others of you might be more conservative like me, and you might want to look for stocks with good broker recommendations. Part of the S&P five stars, those stocks recommended five star buys by Standard & Poor's. Okay, this very similar, but it's a much different position. Here we are again, 30 days out in time, with an at the money covered call with only a 2.7% if assigned versus the 8.5. Something's going on with AAOI, why that implied volatility is so increased, okay? Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to hold off on your question, Scott O, for just one moment, okay? I'm just going to go through this real quick, and I'm going to answer your question, Scott, in just a moment. Now, let me go back. I'm going to go back to this 7-Eleven report. Um, I will say this was updated in the last 12 months, Scott. That was part of your question on the 7-Eleven report. The criteria were updated in the last 12 months. But I'm concerned about this. There's one trade that matched my result. Not a direct recommendation or suggestion. You'd want to review this criteria. It's shown to you exactly what's being used. There are other fundamental and technicals that you could use. And one of the things I might want to consider is, okay, maybe this stock is highly inflated because earnings are coming up. Maybe a covered call, even a high return, high downside protection covered call is not the best play for earnings if it has a 20 to 30% drop. So let me go to fundamentals on the fly. And I'm just going to go ahead and select earnings date, not between now and expiration. That now appears, as you can see down here, in my active filters list. So I can see, again, exactly what changes I've made to the search criteria. Go ahead and submit that. All right. So now, there's no stock options combinations that match my criteria. That's why AAOI was so inflated. It did appear in the 7-Eleven report. It was a good screening parameter. I think it has this criteria, I believe. Most of those sample searches have been updated within the last, uh, within 12 to 15 months, Scott. That's, that's one answer to that question. Okay, but others might be more conservative. Dividends and in the money. Dividends and out of the money. If you don't want to be assigned on dividend stocks, a little bit more safety, less volatility. This comes down to your personal risk or tolerance. And again, we show you exactly why that's here. So whether you're aggressive, in, even in entry strategy, we all know we can be aggressive or moderate or conservative. Here you have conservative screens, broker and advisor recommended, dividends as well, and the aggressive 7-Eleven report. And for those of you, honestly, with lower account sizes for covered calls trading, or you're only allocating a small amount, there's a search here for the under 25 report that's been tested recently, and of course, the weekly covered calls. Now, there are other default searches that are available in every strategy. In addition to starting off with the sample searches, using that as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. There are other default searches just to get you started in the main search tool itself. So if I go to search, I probably have one of my saved searches here that we've used for a webinar. Oh no, good. When you click on search, for the first time in a given strategy, you'll see a list of trades that match our default criteria. And if you scroll down below the list of trades, you will even see the available defaults. These other ones here without the asterisks are ones that we've created on the fly during different webinars, the May 25th, SPY covered calls, uh, and so forth. Okay? But the defaults you start off with, there's three basic ones. Initial values at the money. Okay, those of you who want to do at the money covered calls, in the money covered call screens. Okay, some of you might want to be more conservative. You'd use the in the money one. And those of you that are bullish, you're looking for growth. You think the market's still going to be growing. And you want higher return, less downside. You might want to use the out of the money screen as a default. Okay, so the three here you can use as a stepping stone, whether you consider yourself at the money for better time value 
in the money for better protection, still looking for a reasonable return, or out of the money, more speculative, or just looking for core stocks that match your, your personal criteria that you don't want to get assigned on, want to generate an income like month-by-month uh, -month, uh, dividend income, excuse me. And then, of course, there's one here, simulated CDs, which is going far out in time with leaps calls as well, just to kind of have something out there that has a high maybe 20% protection with a 10% return if assigned over a 10 to 12 month period. All right. Now, for covered calls and naked puts, the most tested and I want to say reliable searches are going to be the monthly picks of the day and the weekly picks of the day. Now, what are these? These are the results. Oh, there's nothing in the monthly right now. I can tell you this, AAOI would have appeared in the monthly picks of the day search, but we're in an earnings cycle and we're not looking for earnings between now and expiration. Okay? And there's also the weekly picks of the day. And this is going to go back to Scott's question a little bit. Scott had asked, in addition to uh, how often are these tested or reviewed, but also sort of what are the expectations, how often are these looked at, and what are some of the expectations, when is the best time, Scott, was another part of your question to open them. The picks of the day are a tool or a feature that's available. In covered calls and naked puts right now, I'll get more on that later. For those who are subscribed on the trial, but also those who are subscribed to the 20-minute delayed service or higher. Now, in this particular service, this particular one. Although we show you the search criteria that we use for this screen specifically, the weekly picks of the day or the monthly picks of the day, the testing results that were done over a one-year period that Ernie tested variations of the criteria, the return in and out of the money, is all described here on this tool. Essentially what he did is he tested multiple outcomes of the criteria, found the one that offered the best return over the same one-year period, and these are the criteria that are being used. Again, you can see that right on the search. And What Ernie specifically did is open these trades every Monday, going to the next Friday expiration, had some one or two basic stops in place. I think if the stock fell 10%, he would close the position, and he had a specific allocation as well. And that's all described here. But let me go here to see how we develop these results. So Ernie walks through this basic one here, um, how he approached it, the technicals and the fundamentals he found worked and didn't work as he tested. And here's the one-year time frame that was used for this screen. It was May 2015 to May 2017, okay, or 16, I'm sorry, one-year period, my apologies. And at the same time, he shows here the results. So the average return over that one-year period well, $100,000 account following his rules went up to $42,000, okay? So it was a 42% return over a one-year period. Ernie and I just finished some other testing for comparisons, by the way. You're going to see that in a blog coming out Friday, I hope, Thursday or Friday. And we ran this for a two-year period from June 2015 to June 2017, as well as the weekly naked puts. And part of the result of doing that is Scott asked, you know, how often you test these? Well, we go through them. We're also fine-tuning and correcting the weekly bull put search, which is good on its own right now, but we're enhancing it, so there's going to be a bull put weekly picks of the day within the next week or so, also available to you, okay? So, going back to square one, you're a customer, and most of you are. You're a subscriber to Power Option. You just started on your trial. You're trading covered calls and you call me up or you join me during a webinar and you say, what is the best criteria to use for a covered call? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask you, honestly, are you looking at weekly or monthly positions? What do you favor more? And if you tell me weekly, I'm going to tell you to look at the weekly picks of the day, either just on the view, and if you want ideas for trades, you can follow along with the top three results you want to customize that a little bit, go to the search. The weekly picks of the day field shows more 
than the top three results there that match that criteria and you can see the exact criteria that were used and you can go back and look at that see how we developed those results to see how it performed over one year period which is going to be updated slightly to show the two-year return for the weekly covered calls if you prefer monthly you want to go further out in time I would suggest using the monthly picks of the day why because I know it's been tested I know there were various iterations that were created and I also know that what the outcome was expected over a certain trading range of one year and now a two-year time period so that's where I would point you to now I'm not saying these are recommendations I'm not saying you should trade off of these you're gonna to want to do your research and analysis for example this one isn't too bad but let's say you did have a smaller portfolio or you're only starting out with options you only want to allocate maybe five thousand or ten thousand dollars to covered calls at this time and you want to have maybe three or four positions open which kind of dictates you're really not opening stocks that are more than forty five dollars or forty dollars per share so you can take this default search criteria as I mentioned we can scroll down below I can change anything I want for the options criteria you want a higher return you want to look for a higher downside protection you're using what we did as a stepping stone you have a requirement for a higher option premium you can plug that in what we would need to do with a smaller account is say look I need to limit my stock price range to let's say between five and forty five dollars per share okay the earnings not between now and expiration is already selected you wanted to look for certain market cap you can put that in as well any of the criteria available you can put in but think about this with just the default criteria we started with going for weekly options you've narrowed down the entire universe of about 480 securities stocks indexes and ETFs that offer weekly options to only 13 results now you know you're going to stay in a certain price range so you're not going to be trading RH at $75 or some of the higher ones at $50 so we changed our stock criteria okay and now we'll just submit the search didn't take too many out but now there's 10 results so out of the entire universe of options if I was going to make a trade for this Friday I've narrowed it down to just 10 results that don't have earnings between now and expiration between Friday's expiration offer at least a 0.5 percent return if assigned for a three-day trade have some reasonable downside protection and match those bullish stock technicals and stock fundamentals I mentioned now all that being said that's what's behind the criteria yes we look at them yes we test them but you may have a question not a question but you may have an idea and your idea is you know I read somewhere <laughs> I get a lot of these I saw a webinar I read somewhere where someone is touting covered call trades with only a three-day time frame opening them on Wednesday on stocks over fifty dollars per share that don't have earnings and have at least a 1.5 percent return if assigned you've got a very specific screen even though you only mentioned three things to me it's very specific how would I do that and you know what it is because you want to put it in and you'll see exactly what you're looking for let me go ahead and hit clear filters anytime you're in any search you can toggle through the defaults you can start off sample searches in any strategy or you can just ignore what's shown scroll down below the list of trades click on clear filters what do I want I want covered calls that expire this week so for my time frame I can select all expirations or all weeklies I'm leave it at all expirations I'll put my time frame of zero to four days out in time you set a minimum percent return of 1.5 percent so I'll go down to percent if assigned that's the return if I'm called out on the position I want a minimum 1.5 percent I don't care if it's in the money out of the money or what honestly you're probably going to want some decent downside protection too let's just put in a downside protection of one but we didn't have to we'll take that out in a second and just for some good liquidity I'll put in an option volume say of greater than zero and an open interest greater than 10 what was your other requirement stocks above fifty dollars per share going to fundamentals very simple fifty to blank greater than fifty to less than 
Don't put anything in the lesson, leave it open. You don't care if it's this case a hundred dollar stock, you're trying to find this pattern. And you need to avoid stocks that have an earnings date between now and expiration. Simple check on the box there. You gave me three criteria for this week's expiration. There are only 18 total results. I did not restrict it by in or out of the money. Uh, you can see here, I did not restrict it um, also, excuse me, I also did not restrict it by only looking at one result per security. So the kind of at the money options here for JDST, three times bear ETF, a three times bull ETF on the biotechs, a lot of biotechs, uh, restoration hardware, and more. Okay. So you've narrowed the entire universe down with three clicks to only 18 positions. But you know what? We can do better, depending on your outlook. Let's say you want securities. You don't want to trade these bull three times, four times, two times ETFs or bearish ETFs two or three times. Not a problem. I mentioned earlier, you can put in the list that you want to see. You can create your own personal list and follow your stocks. You can follow company lists. If you just want to screen against stocks, say, in the Investor Business Daily 50 or the S&P 5 stars, NASDAQ 100. I want to do is I want to exclude stocks. So we're going to go ahead and exclude indexes and ETFs. I could also choose just to remove the leveraged or inverse ETFs. We're going to remove all indexes and ETFs. Let's run that search again. Now we've got it narrowed down. We took out those six or seven ETFs that appeared in the results. We've got it down to 12. I'm not saying these are good positions. I'm saying it's that easy to create a specific search from scratch. If you have three or four criteria that you're focused on and looking for in your specific search, you can clear the filters, plug in that directly. You've probably narrowed down the universe of options. It's a time-saving tool. We've got the criteria to help you get started. We've got tested criteria in the picks of the day for a few of the strategies. And the default strategies, as I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to know what criteria I would look for in a given strategy with my 15 years of trading experience, or what we've based on what, uh, sorry, what customers of Power Options over the last 20 years have been using in their accounts, that's already set for you in the sample searches and the default searches as well. For the naked puts also, same process. You wanted to know what criteria I would use for a weekly naked put or a monthly naked put? I'd start off with the weekly picks of the day, but if you have other criteria you want to apply, for example, let me look at the naked put weekly picks of the day. Right, these same ones that we saw with covered calls, RH and AO, AAOI. Why? Because they have the bullish criteria. I'd look for almost the same stock and fundamental criteria in a naked put that I would look for in a covered call. It's a parity trade, really. So I'd look for the same criteria. That's why you're seeing similar stocks. But are there more out there right now that aren't as high priced? Maybe I want to keep this under $50 because I'm only using cash secured naked puts. No problem. I'd go to search under naked put. Weekly picks of the day. Yep. U.S. Steel. Why were there only two shown in the naked put picks of the day? Again, if you click on see how we develop those results, the testing results were based on taking the top two of the, of the trades that matched it. You know, Ernie tried it using all of them, using four of them, using five of them using one of them and using two of them. The sweet spot over that testing period was to use the two top trades sorted by return. But although these are good, I've got to say to myself, I'm not going to, again, enter a cash secure naked put with a stock above X, $50. So what do I do? I'm going to change this. I want this just to be between nine and 50. A simple change. All my criteria that were used are shown on the right hand side in the active filters. And now I have the three possible trades that match the weekly naked puts. You used it as a stepping stone, but we had to make a change based on our requirement. So floor decor, U.S. deal, first solar. Again, avoiding stocks that have an earnings between now and expiration. There's that earnings per share growth, similar to what we saw. Very similar MACD crossover range that we saw on the covered call screen and the average stock volume, okay, because they're neutral or bullish positions. All right, so 
That's how easy it is. Now, those of you who are buying calls and puts, remember, there are 50% of you doing uh, calls and puts and credit spreads. What can you do with long calls? Same process. So I can go to long call. Now I can go to the sample searches, as we saw before. And you'll see some themes as current option volume. Long calls where the total option volume is greater than the average. Bollinger Band breakout and calls to buy. Stocks in an uptrend, ranked by volatility. Why are there three? Because some people like to hunt for the volume breakout. Some people really feel that no matter what the fundamentals or technicals are, when you see that high volume, increased volume on a security, follow the crowd, follow the activity, doesn't matter what the Bollinger Bands are, doesn't matter what the MACD is, I want to follow the crowd. That's where you're looking, the current option volume screen. Bollinger Band breakout, hey, looking for a breakout above the Bollinger Band. Once it breaks out, high probability, excuse me, high probability is going to increase in that direction. These, to answer your question again, Scott, the Bollinger Band breakout and the Bollinger Band search, which is very similar. Let's just go to the search. Here we go. Bollinger Bands there. Strike three months out. One strike out of the money in an uptrend within the top 10% are recently showing a breakout. Why is this here? Because again, this is criteria Ernie tested within the last, was tested two years ago, created a Bollinger Band breakout search for himself, and what he was using in his account was visited 12 to 15 months ago, I'd say about 12 months ago, and again, it's probably going to be looked at one more time in the near future. This would probably be close. We're going to test this one too after we do the credit spreads, but this one is close to what would be a picks of the day. We're going to play around with the time frame. We're going to play around, you see here the Bollinger Band breakout, MACD, and so forth. We're going to look at other filters to enhance this, okay? And also the same thing you'd see in the long put. You'd see a Bollinger Band breakout, and you'd also see ones for high option volume, okay? Credit spreads. <laughs> and let's get into the bull put credit spreads very quickly. It's all the same. I'm, I don't feel want to beat a dead horse here for all the different strategies, but it's all the same. We can start off with the sample searches here for bull put credits. Some of you may prefer to do it on ETFs, which are safer. Some of you may prefer to look for stocks that are just on the five star list. Okay, five star recommended buys for bull puts, looking for good bullish stocks. Others are going to be more aggressive. You don't really care if it's recommended as a five-star buy or if it's a large cap here in the safety first. You might just want to look for a position that's using weeklies. No problem. Go in a search. Just as we saw with naked puts and with the covered calls, and very soon, within the next week or so, you're going to see a picks of the day here. You've got a default weekly bull put screen. You see the description right here. Let's define the best bull puts using weekly options based on our testing, which was done about 15 months ago. One of the interesting things both Ernie and I found is for a weekly screen, you might be confused when you pull up this criteria. When you scroll down and you say, okay, Mike told me that the active filters are shown. I want to see exactly what they're looking for with the weekly bull puts. And the first thing you're going to see is that we're looking for any expiration, whether it's considered a standard expiration or a weekly expiration, that's 8 to 17 days out in time. Why is that? I, I want to look 7 days out in time. I want to look 3 days out in time. Why are they going 8 to 17 days out? Because believe it or not, using the exact same fundamental technical criteria, and of course looking for minimum net credit ranges, good probability as well, we took this exact same criteria and looked for the options that were five days out. The results were disastrous. It was actually a losing record in testing, going week by week by week. Why? Because on average, you get a lower net credit. You're still taking on the same risk of a one or a two or a three-point spread, but the losses started to outpace the wins drastically because instead of maybe getting 20 cents, 30 cents, or 40 cents on a two-point spread or more, Going two weeks out in time, you're seeing seven cents, eight cents, or ten cents, even on a two-point spread going week by week. So long-term testing, again, over that one to two year period, the 14-day out trade, still consider weekly options, but going 14 days out had a better 
track record and a higher return and not a loss compared to going week by week by week. It's a very interesting phenomenon. Two, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, during a webinar or Friday open discussions, a customer asked, what is the difference, what is the rate of the return between the weekly covered calls and the weekly bull puts? Well, that launched off a whole new series of tests, which are going to wrap up this week, where we retested the weekly covered call picks of the day and were not surprised, but have the results for you over that two-year period. And over that same two-year period, we fine-tuned this search based on a couple of other interesting factors that we found, and that's going to be adjusted and shown to you very soon as well. So you ask me, what is the best bull put search to use? Well, if you don't know what to use, you don't have a criteria, you haven't developed your trading plan yet, I'm going to point you to here. I'm going to tell you to wait a day or two so you see those weekly bull put picks of the day. You want to do monthly bull puts, that's fine. We can go to the initial values starting off with this screen here, and then you can adjust the criteria as we did before. So here's our defaults. What do we see? Very similar things for technicals, fundamentals, looking for stocks with good growth, avoiding earnings between now and expiration, but a little bit higher return as well. Okay, and But you can say, well, I want to do more. I want to look for stocks, for example, for my bull put spreads in addition to that, where the stock trades at least 750,000 shares per day. Or I would do want a positive MACD crossover within at least the last two days. No problem. Customize it for your needs. Submit the search. You've narrowed it down to two results that match your criteria. I'm not saying these are recommendations or suggestions, but you know. Unlike other services, you know exactly why you're seeing these two trades. What was the return used? What was the probability? What was the range out of the money? What was the net credit? And of course, why were the other fundamentals and technicals there? Each search you come across will have a description of what was used <laughs> on that as well. Okay. Martin, I can't answer your question without further testing. I can't answer a question like this outright. I can run some tests for you, perhaps not this week. I'd have to do it next week. But here's Martin's question. Can I profit using weekly bull puts married to an ATM put six months out in time? My first answer is going to be no. It really is. I'm going to test that for you a little bit, but I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you're going to be putting too much money into that six month out, especially at the money put. On that scenario, we're trying to do a calendar put with an extra long put involved in it. If it drops, I mean, that's another way to look at it. But I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you're not going to be able to profit on that position because the money you're spending on the six-month output is probably going to wipe out the returns one month at a time. And unless the stock really falls, you'll never get that back. That's my sentiment. Okay, You're going to lose more in the first week or the first two weeks on the six month output, especially if the stock stays the same or moves up, then the credit you're going to receive for a weekly bull put. On a weekly bull put, you're talking about 10, 15, 20 cents in that credit. You're going to lose more than that probably on time decay and change on the six month out AT input. I'll look at it as well. And to answer your second question, are the covered calls better? Over the past two years, believe it or not, yes they were. And I'll, I'll show you those numbers once we finalize the test. But there's also some other factors you have to consider with that. And I don't want to get into this discussion right now, Martin. I'll show you that in a blog later on this week of the comparisons and sort of the different situations. Because if you go through the covered call testing, I'll say this real quick. If you go through that covered call testing, the weekly covered calls, and you look at the, how we developed these results, you'll see that Ernie started off his testing, and I continued his testing over the two-year period, by taking a $100,000 account and literally applying 50% into the top two positions, or 30% in the top three, I can't remember which, but I think it was 50% in the top two positions, okay? Why? Because even if he has losses in a covered call testing, no positions are going to go bankrupt, right? Very infrequently is that covered call going to go to zero that would match that search criteria. So you can afford to do what he did is use the Kelly criterion of allocation, the rules for allocation, and he ran the test, 
Okay, we saw already over the first year that was a 43, 42 percent return using that criteria from 2015 to 2016. It increased by over 100%, um, I'm not over 100%, I should say, but it tripled essentially. Over the two-year period, the return on the covered calls following Ernie's rules, the weekly covered calls, and the stops that he had in place that are described there was about 120%. Now, backtracking, I can't do that same setup on a bull put credit spread. Let's take a look why. I'm just going to open up Netflix and the profit and loss. I know I'm getting off track here, but we're going to wrap up real quick. What's the problem with a bull put credit spread versus a covered call or a naked put? If the stock fell to 165, let's say that I open this bull put credit spread, selling the 175, buying the 170 on Netflix, get a decent net credit, 95 cents, return of 23.5% on a five-point spread. If I allocated $4,000 to this trade, okay, for the margin requirement, $4,050, okay, to do 10 contracts, if the stock suddenly spikes below 170, where I don't manage it and that expiration goes below 170, I'm losing 100% of what I invested in this trade. You can't do the same allocation in a bull put credit spread as you could with that covered call screen because the risk of bankruptcy is too high. If you have two trades right off the bat, even with stops in place, you might be bankrupt on the first trade or the first cycle. Okay, so what did we do? We took a $100,000 account, only allocated 20% of the 100,000 to bull put credit spreads. And of course, uh, at the same time, there were some other criteria involved, but you know, we diversified out to three trades. So we were taking $20,000 in a $100,000 account and allocating 33% to the top three trades that match that. Okay, we tried two percent. I'm sorry, we tried two trades only, allocating 50% of the 20,000. We tried five trades, and so forth. Various iterations. Okay, and so far, the one that we have the best over the two-year period, the best criteria, which is still two weeks out in time, not one week, believe it or not, and it's not using lower margin. In other words, no 50 cent spreads or one point spreads, which also resulted in a loss with the same criteria, believe it or not. Two spreads, uh, sorry, two strike spreads are greater going 14 days out in time. Over that same two year period with that different allocation is a 59.5% return on the bull put credit spreads, okay? Why is that, why have I not just put that out now? Because Ernie's running a couple more tests. Whatever I do, Ernie feels he can do better. So that's why I keep saying in the next two days or so, you'll see a write-up on that, and you'll see the weekly bull puts available picks of the day based on if he can outperform uh, what we've shown over that past two-year testing problem. Now, keep in mind, I agree with you. Someone said here, well, that doesn't mean anything. Well, it means something. Okay, and here's what it means. It means that to identify the covered call, weekly and monthly picks of the day, the naked put, what we're doing with the bull put and the bear call credit right now, it means that we tested various criteria, structures of the trade, which is really important with the bull put credit spread as I've mentioned, different technical and fundamental criteria, various iterations, 40 to 50 different searches, tweaking a little thing here or there to find the best return. Am I saying that it's the best covered calls that you'll find of someone who's making covered call picks? No, I'm not. I'm showing you what we saw would have happened with testing this. And you're right, Jim. It was Jim that mentioned this. You're right, Jim. That is no guarantee of performance going forward. But we're not stock pickers. I'll be honest with you. These are not recommendations or suggestions. We're giving you ideas based on our knowledge of trading. What we have tested in the past, what has worked for us in our personal accounts, that is what's here, and you can see them exactly what criteria were used for those different strategies as well. Okay? Um, actually, Scott, no, we didn't. Okay, here's, here's uh, what I'm going to say. And going through all of this, we're talking about the different criteria that we've tested. Why are they there? Why are these criteria in here for you on our sample searches, our theme searches, and our picks of the day? Uh, even for married puts, why do we suggest, other than the fact that, you know, we promote the radioactive trading position, 
and the radioactive trading strategy. Why do we still say this search is the default you should use? Our radioactive search was developed by Kurt Frankenberg and what he looks for for limiting risk and at the same time sorting by earnings per share growth is because for what we look for in the married put, I have not actually found better criteria that perform over various markets. That's the key, Scott. We didn't go into this blind, but that two-year trend that I mentioned, okay, what we looked for from, uh, and I'll just go to a two-year right now. Hold on one second. We wanted to see if you just stuck with the strategy, whether it be covered calls, whether it be bull puts, whether it be naked puts, and even bear calls. I mean, it's going to be interesting what we discover with the bear calls that we're working on right now. I'll, I'll be right with you folks. I'm just making a couple changes to something here very, very quickly. Uh, I just want to clean this up a little bit. Okay, let me, let me, sorry. All right, I'll just do this, okay? All right, so sorry about that. Let me go ahead and show you. This two-year time period was essentially from, the, I, I've talked about that we've tested recently, was from June 20th, 2016, I'm oh, sorry, 2015. Wow. <laughs> sorry, it's Wednesday, folks. To end of June 2017, 19 days ago, okay? So from here, roughly, oh, that's a terrible drawing, Mike, from, well, it's, yeah, from here, there we go, from this point to this point was where we tested the covered calls, bull put credits, naked puts, and the bear call credits, okay? So we didn't take it into account. We would have. So if we saw a MACD crossover in the SPY, we probably wouldn't have been doing bullish or bearish. The market sentiment tool and power options showed us a bearish. We probably wouldn't have been entered them. But what we showed you, what you're seeing in the testing results, is taking that out of consideration for what search criteria worked best over all markets. So including the downdraft here and here. Little hiccup here, which is significant. Little hiccup here. All through that time period, bull puts were opened, covered calls were opened, naked puts were opened, and still had those positive test results. Okay, could you enhance it doing it the other way? Maybe. Um, we'll look at. I mean, maybe we can look at that. But one interesting thing we found with the bull puts you'll see soon is that, believe it or not, it's best not to use any stops at all as trigger points. If the stock falls 5%, if the stock falls below the short put strike price, if the stock falls 10%, you end up closing out more positions that would have ended up being in a profit. It's actually better. We'll, we'll, we'll run some other tests on that as well. Okay. Um, and Ellis asks, do you have sample searches on calendar spreads or testing done? Yes, I do. Okay. A few months ago, we ran a series of webinars I'll just go to the webinars tab here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, under option strategies. This is a public page, of course, powerup.com slash webinars.asp. We talked about calendar spread basics and calendar spread criteria. And the criteria that I mentioned here and the calendar spread criteria for diagonal and horizontal were tested and performed well. Now, I haven't run further testing on that for the weekly diagonals or for the weekly, I'm sorry, for the weekly diagonals or for more of the monthly diagonals, Alice. But those are the criteria that I use in my personal account. And honestly, I don't use horizontal spreads, same strike spreads in my personal account, so I don't test those, okay? Um, I will eventually, but it's not important to me because I'm actually trading, we're doing other testing, and obviously I'm doing other webinars and other educational products as well. But that's the criteria I use, and that's the criteria I tested before we did the webinar and they're available in the calendar call screen, okay? With some subtle tweaks, of course, as well. All right. Well, I think I've basically covered everything that I wanted to discuss so far in relation to today's presentation. Remember, the search tool, the benefit of power options in the various strategies, whether you're doing the covered calls, whether you're doing the credit spreads, whether you're even doing iron condors or you're just buying calls. You can customize it to your needs. 
those searches we've created are what Ernie and I would use as a starting point, what we would look for, and what we would trade in our personal accounts. It's already there in all of the 23 plus different strategies. You can easily change criteria from the results that come up to match your specific needs. And we saw how easy it was to just create a search from scratch in any strategy. Just plug in your specific needs. And if you get 80 or 90 results, that's fine. Fine tune it a little bit more. Increase the percent return. Increase the probability of success of the range out of the money on a credit spread, for example. In just a few moments, you'll be able to narrow down that list to 20 results or less. It's a time saver. And you know specifically why that's in that list. You can create multiple searches in a given strategy, too. Some of you covered call traders may use a portion of the money you're allocating to covered calls for higher return at the money positions that you feel are bullish or maybe had even that increased option volume, looking like a target following the crowd. But at the same time, you may keep a core holding of blue chip or large cap stocks that you trade out of the money on. I can have three to four, five, ten different searches in each strategy based on a certain grouping or a certain avenue of what I want to search for and what I look for in my portfolio for diversification. Okay? And of course, all those results we saw, when you saw the results table, the different criteria, you can customize all those data tables in every search. So if you only wanted to see, for example, in a covered call, the stock price, the stock symbol, the return if assigned, the downside protection, probability of assignment, volume and open interest, you can take everything out of that table and just have your needs selected for your quick view and your analysis. Again, all of the criteria have been tested, all of the criteria you see in the sample searches, the default criteria underneath the main search fill in the picks of the day have been tested, and some have been tested very recently. Okay. Specifically, the picks of the day, the weekly and monthly picks of the day for the cover calls and naked puts, coming up the bull put spreads, you'll see some changes there, and the calendar spreads, as Ellis mentioned also. But we show you how we tested these approaches and the results. As I mentioned, there's more updates coming soon. But even the default criteria for a strategy maybe I didn't show today, such as the long calls, where we talked about the Bollinger Band breakouts or the high option volume, based on your preference, what you think is important in a strategy, there's likely a themed or a default search for you that you can use as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. So again, anytime you ask me, what are the criteria would you use in a long strangle? It's already there in the default searches. That's what I'd start with, and I might make changes. Based on, as Scott mentioned, what is the current market mood, the market sentiment? What is the market sentiment tool and power option showing me? Again, that's a topic for a different presentation but it's already there. That's what I would use, the defaults in the search, and then make changes based on my needs, your needs, the individual investor, your risk reward tolerance. All right, so what can't we do? Well, we're not a brokerage firm, of course, so those of you that are just getting started, power options is a time saver, gives you the ability to put in specifically what you wanna see for your needs, or use our defaults as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. Well, we're not a trading platform, of course. You'd still want to have a regular broker, and I'm sure most of you already do. And just a reminder, we talked about that 14-day free trial period. You can get full use of power options for 14 days, the 20-minute delayed service with some actual historical backtesting features in there. Um, but the delayed service, 15 to 20-minute delayed, is $60 per month access to the search and all strategies, the quick links for all the research, our other signature tools, and of course, access to the portfolio to help you track, manage, and evaluate rollout opportunities and adjustments on all the strategies you're tracking in your portfolio. We do offer an end of day service, which is only $40 per month, but those picks of the day features are not available in the end of the day service. And of course, we do also offer a real time, so every time you refresh the page or run a search, you're getting the numbers and calculations at that very instant. Now, I mentioned we do have a backtesting feature on Power Options where you can look at historical option chains. You can manually run searches month by month or week by week based on your saved criteria with the historical tools, um, and you can also look by symbol. But the tool that Ernie and I use in the background that we developed, which will run a two-year or three-year test of criteria that we've input 
and that we're testing and that we're tweaking um, with stops in place, which takes maybe 30 to 40 minutes a test for a two to three year period, is something we have in the background. Okay, something we do in the background that's not available in the tools. However, if you have a set of criteria that you've been using and you want to test maybe with a change or a couple changes to it and maybe put in a stop in it and you want to see how that would have performed with a certain allocation over two or three or four or five year period even, we do offer another service called the Strategy Testing Service. Now it's $50 for a one-time run. We'll give you a breakdown of what happened to your search, what was the allocation, ideas to make it better, and so forth. But we'll do that analysis for you if you've got a safe search and power options that you want to test. It doesn't include rollouts, doesn't include rolling out if stock hits X or XY, just a static, let's say covered calls, I'm assuming assignment for profit, or I'm going to stop it out if it drops 5% or below the call strike price, things of that nature. Now right now we do only support on this tool covered call strategies, naked puts, bear call credits, bull put credits, buying calls, buying puts, and long stocks. But again, if you have a criteria you want to test, you can go to the Power Options store, click on the strategy testing and optimization, and you'll be able to see what's available for you there if you want a set of criteria you're using tested to see how it performs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any other questions, I mean, it's uh, 10 after uh, 1 o'clock here, 1, 10 p.m. Eastern time, a little bit after that. But uh, if you have any last-minute questions, go ahead and send them to me in the question pod. Remember, you can email us at any time if you have questions also. Send me an email to support at powerop.com. You can also call us during market hours. Myself and Ernie are usually here. Uh, of course, we are here, I should say, during market hours. Um, I don't... Both of us might be unavailable for the next 45 minutes or so, uh, but you can always reach us during market hours at 302-992-7971. If you don't get an answer, don't be frustrated. Leave a message. That just means that myself, Ernie, Greg, and, one of, and the other staff members are currently on the other lines. If you leave a message as soon as I'm done my phone calls, uh, my coaching sessions, or I'm off a webinar, I'll check the messages right away and give you a call back as soon as I get your message. Okay? All right. Um, all right, so, all right, Scott, thank you. I appreciate that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation on reviewing what's available in the Power Options criteria, why the criteria are selected for those default searches. Yes, they have been reviewed. Yes, they have been tested, and they're based on what our customers have wanted over the years and what we use ourselves in our personal account. You can customize it any way you want to, or remember the other advantage, you see exactly what is available. You see exactly what criteria were used to identify the stocks, identify the options, so there's no questions about, oh, this service said this was a bullish naked put that offers a 1% yield. You don't know what their bullish criteria are. It might just be, oh, okay, stock has moved up two points in the last three days. That might be their bullish trend. Does that match your needs? Does that match your goals? And where other services show you picks or show you lists of potential trades and say, you know, these are not recommendations or suggestions, do they allow you to change the criteria? Do they allow you to create your own functionality search based on your personal risk reward tolerance and what you need for your trading plan and your personal account? Probably not, but Power Options does. It's all available for you in all the 23 plus strategies. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic week and a fantastic afternoon. Hope to see you all soon on one of our upcoming live presentations. Take care, everyone. Happy trading and happy going into standard July expiration on Friday. We'll talk to you soon. Good night.